Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel, it's Rust Buck Collector here, and while it has been a while since I've uploaded a video here on the channel, I wanted to round out the year with one of my personal favorite videos to make, and that is my personal top 10 action figures of 2023. This is a very subjective list, and it only covers the figures that I picked up in 2023 that were released in 2023. This figure right here though, the 6 inch black series Clone Commander Jesse, this is not on the list. I'm sorry. I love my boy Jesse, but this figure is just, it's not it. What is on the list though is this Clone Commander Apo, or rather just a 501st Clone Trooper. This is the Target exclusive 6 inch Black Series Clone Trooper with the all new Clone Trooper mold, or the, the all new improved Clone Trooper mold. It's very similar to ones we've gotten previously, but of course it has the floating shoulder pads now. It's got the all new torso that is actually quite a bit lower on the body than the other one. It also has the removable helmet, and it's nice to finally have painted heads heads underneath these helmets. So while this is sort of just a remix of the new mold clone trooper just with some improvements, also it has the uh, floating knee pads now so that they drop down with the leg when you bend the knee. Uh, th this is just a remix of the old figure. However, it's a really fun clone trooper action figure and it fixes a lot of the major issues with the new mold clone trooper. And I really hope we see this going forward with every future clone release. It's just really solid. It's fun to pose and it looks so good. Next up we have the vintage collection Cal Kestis. I absolutely love this figure. It's so fun to pose and it has all the great improvements that they've brought to the vintage collection. Ball hinge hips, the more hidden knee joints, everything you want to see on a three and three quarter inch figure done super, super well here. And really my only gripe with this figure is that it didn't come sooner. I absolutely love the Jedi Survivor Jedi Fallen Order games. And unfortunately it took until now to finally get a Cal Kestis in the vintage collection. Hopefully this release means more might be on the way though. I would absolutely love a Cal Kestis in Hot Toys form, and I would love to see his Fallen Order appearance in Vintage Collection. It just seems like they kind of pick and choose random characters. I'm so glad we got this one in Vintage Collection, though. It's such a good figure. It's got great articulation. And like we're seeing more and more with the Vintage Collection, the face printing looks exceptional at the three and three quarter inch scale. It's impressive what they can do with such a small little piece of plastic. Next up, we have the Jazzwares Spartan Collection Spartan Agrinia from Halo Infinite. I, I hope I'm saying that right. I have some friends that will correct me if I say that wrong. While new Halo releases have been fairly limited this year, this is one that really stands out to me. I absolutely love that they chose to do this figure from the multiplayer like uh, cinematics that we got back in the early seasons. I, I think they kind of stopped doing those, but this is one of the main characters from those and it looks absolutely fantastic. It's an all new sculpt. There's really no pieces on here that are reused from previous figures because she has a very unique armor set. And because of that, because of a lot of the gaps in her armor just from the design, it means it is a super poseable figure. She can hold weapons a lot more easily than other figures because of that. And we get this incredible chrome blue visor, which just looks stunning on this figure. And what makes this even better is that it's readily available at GameStops. It seems like you can get it on the website. You can find it in stores pretty frequently. And I think this is one of the best Spartan collection figures we've gotten in the last couple waves. And if you haven't picked it up yet, I would, I would highly suggest picking this one up. Now I meant to say this right at the top of the video, but these figures are in really no particular order. It's just my top 10. When I get everything together here at the end of the video, I'll probably try and pick out like maybe my top three. I think we'll try and do that by the end. But for the most part, these are just my top 10. Moving back to the vintage collection, we have the vintage collection Paz Vizsla. I really think that this is one of the few times that the deluxe figure packaging and price feels worth it. This figure came with a load of accessories, including this big chain gun and some fire effects that can plug into the end of the barrels there. He's got an arm shield. He's got a backpack with flame effects, which I seem to have lost one in the process of collecting these figures for this video, but he comes with a lot of accessories. The jetpack's removable. It's just an all around really sweet figure. And also it's very, very bulky as it should be. It's a big bulky heavy Mandalorian coming in here with his big heavy machine gun, which I'm just struggling now to get him to hold properly. Either way, it's really fun. It looks cool. I love the Mandalorians and I love specifically 
big, bulky, heavy Mandalorians with freaking laser machine guns. Next up, of course, it's the new Vintage Collection Clone Trooper mold. Now, for the sake of this video, I'm using the Andor clone. However, the 212th multi-pack is also just as good. I, I'm just kind of lumping those two together. They both have their issues and their improvements, especially when it comes to the visor on the Andor clone and then how they fixed that with the 212th. But either way, it's, it's this mold. It's this figure. They're just repaints, so I kind of just lump them together. It is such a fun mold. It brings together so many good elements of a clone trooper action figure. It is by far the most posable clone trooper figure that we've ever gotten in the three and three quarter inch scale. And like I mentioned in my review of the figure, I'm not a huge fan of the helmet. It, it's regrettable how misshapen it is. And I am looking forward to the fixes that they seem to have done with the new multi-pack that's coming out next year. But for what it is, for this new Clone Trooper mold, I am having a lot of fun with it. It looks great. I've seen a lot of people swap out this head for older designs or 3D printed helmets. And yeah, it's such a good mold that I could not leave it off this list. Despite its flaws, it's just fun. It's the Clone Trooper action figure I wish I had as a kid growing up. It is the new definitive three and three quarter inch Clone Trooper mold from recent years. I still think Revenge of the Sith really nailed it with those older figures, but for modern releases, this is the definitive Clone Trooper. The next item on this list is kind of a cheat, but I made the rules, so I guess I can also break the rules, but uh, it's this entire line. From the Ninja Turtles Mutant Mayhem movie, these little like $10 action figures are so so charming and so fun to get. I absolutely could not leave them off this list. I got the entire wave. I rarely do that, especially for a toy line and a franchise that I'm not terribly familiar with. However, the movie was just so fun and so full of heart. The animation was amazing that I basically went out the next day and I got every single figure I could find, at least in this scale. They, they made a couple different scales and a few different versions, but I tried to get these ones, these like roughly four inch tall figures, and they're just so much fun. You get the villains like B Bop and Rocksteady here. And then Series 2 just dropped in my stores recently, so I got the rest of the villain team. At some point, I plan to possibly repaint them, give them some paint washes and such just to make them stand out a little bit more, kind of give them that animated feel with some self-shading maybe. But overall, this whole line of figures, especially at the $10 price point, is so much fun. It's so great to see them so widely circulated on store shelves. You can walk into just about any Walmart, Meyer, whatever, and you can pick up basically the entire movie cast. And that is so rare with toy lines these days. I absolutely love to see it. I love these figures. They're fun to play with. They're fun to pose around on the shelf. And yeah, this whole line, this whole wave is fantastic. If you haven't seen the movie, I would highly recommend doing that. And then you too will probably want to pick up the rest of these figures. Next up, we have yet another Another fantastic release from the Spartan collection. This one really wasn't on my radar. It just was like, eh, you know, it's the Spartan Spartan from Master Chief collection. It's not really uh, canon. It's not a character that I know and love. It's not even an armor set that I really wear in game. But then, you know, I saw in stores, figured, hey, why not? I'll pick it up. And once I did, I did not regret it. This is one of the few Halo figures that I absolutely would recommend to people that maybe aren't even Halo fans. This is just such a cool action action figure. It's a sci-fi Spartan with a shield and a spear, and he's got this really great detailed armor with all kinds of paint washes and dry brushing over top. It also has truly the most detailed weapon from the Spartan collection we've ever gotten with all these really intricate little patterns painted on it. It's really awesome looking. It's got that metallic brassy color inside of those details. And yeah, this is such a phenomenal figure, not even specifically as a Halo figure, but just as a figure in general. The sci-fi armored version of a Spartan from Thermopylae is definitely not something that I thought would be on my list for 2023. But again, once I got it in hand, it was just too fun and too detailed. I, yeah, it, it won me over once I had it in hand and I got an up close look at all of these great details. Shrinking back down to the three and three quarter inch scale, we have the vintage collection Hunter. I really love the best. Bad Batch series. I will enjoy any figures that they release from the Bad Batch. I think it's a little bit depressing how few of them we've gotten, especially that we haven't gotten a complete team of these figures in Vintage Collection yet, but this one is pretty great. It fixes some of the issues that I had with the Black Series version, especially with the knee pads, and it has the same fun posability that the new Vintage Collection Clone Trooper mold back here has, so I just absolutely love it. The paint deco is great. The removable helmet reveals a really pretty decent likeness to Tamora Morrison. I think this head sculpt far beats the... Uh, 
Black Series version of Hunter's Head Sculpt. So yeah, this is just a really fun and awesome little vintage collection clone trooper. I, I really just hope that they complete the team. I mean, come on, it's been like three years now and we haven't gotten a full vintage collection Bad Batch team. Just give us a multi-pack at this point. Let us let us round it out with like the original cast of characters. Don't give us Imperial Crosshair and not the original Crosshair. Give us both. You know, that that is my wish for 2024. If I had like a top figures I want to see in 2024, the full Bad Batch team would definitely be up there. And then probably all of the clones that we see in Bad Batch, give us those on the new mold, like Fireball and Nemec. Please and thank you, Hasbro. Please, I'm, I'm begging you. Now, I know I said before that there's no particular order to these figures, but as I was making this video, I decided there actually is. And there are three figures or three toy items that round out my top two spots for this figure list. I'm going to showcase those in just a moment, but I also wanted to touch on some honorable mentions from this year. So really quick, we're going to rapid fire through these. I only played the game once, but I absolutely loved this $10 Samus figure that I found at Walmart. Super articulated, really fun to just pose around and have fun with, but ultimately just it wasn't quite top 10 material. It took everything in me not to put Put Fred on this top 10 list. I absolutely love Fred's armor design with the dual knives on the shoulder pads, his helmet, the color of blue. He's just such a cool figure. But what kept him off the top 10 was that, as I showed in my review, he cannot shoulder his weapon well at all. The bulk of his armor is just really inhibiting his articulation. He needs swivels at the elbow instead of just the double hinge. He needs a swivel where he could do an inward flex, which really you can only get like like that far he needs that joint if he had that joint he would be top 10 probably top three material honestly republic commando scorch is unfortunately also on this list it's pretty much just a repaint of the republic commando mold and i think i've had it on the previous uh, top 10 figures of 2022 so i didn't want to just do a bunch of repaints this figure is great it's a ton of fun i absolutely love these black series commandos they aren't super accurate but they are really fun figures and that's what really matters at the end of the day if you have fun posing them and just messing around with them on a shelf then that makes them a good action figure. And I think these Republic Commando figures fit that description perfectly. It's just, I've had them on the list too many times. I, I had to I had to bump them down to honorable mention. Ah, the Crimson Viper, it's a repaint. It's a cool repaint. I love the color, but again, I just, you can't have so many repaints on this. It's not a, a new figure. So I wanted to just mention it here. It's a really fun figure. I like the coloration but not top 10 quality at all. And finally on the list of honorable mentions, my boy Ghost from Call of Duty. This is the new Jazzwares figure. This is the San Diego Comic-Con variant of the figure. There is also the standard release figure. It's a really cool figure. I did a review on it. It's got a soft goods cloak, which is awesome. It's got this great deco for the tattoos, runs up the arm, even runs up the joint, which I thought was a really impressive detail. But ultimately it didn't quite crack the top 10. I do love this figure. I think it fits in really well with other figures like the G.I. Joe Classified. It's kind of like Fred where I really like this figure and a lot of the details that come with it, but it just couldn't quite outweigh some of the other figures released this year. And so, yeah, for that reason, he is in the honorable mentions as well. Now then, for my top two picks for the year, we're going to have to kind of zoom out away from this really great, exceptional lineup of figures to showcase some rather large additions to the collection. If you thought they were missing, if you thought I forgot about Hot Toys releases this year, I certainly did not. This is kind of a tie. I cannot pick between these two, but these two Hot Toys clone troopers, Commander Jesse and Commander Apo, kind of, are the two best clone troopers released by Hot Toys, in my opinion, in all of Hot Toys history, possibly. These two fill one spot on the list here. I'm not counting them as individuals, primarily because I could not pick a favorite between the two of them. So Arc Trooper Jesse is like the embodiment of my favorite Clone Wars era Star Wars clone troopers. He's just iconic. We follow him through the Clone Wars and Hot Toys did a great job just embodying all the details and everything great about the ARC Trooper Jesse design. But then they released Commander Apo, and yes, he does look a little bit different because I gave him these macro binoculars, and I did that for one specific reason. This, in my mind, is Commander Bo from the three and three quarter inch Order 66 two-pack. This is Commander Bo to me. And that clone mold in the three and three quarter inch scale 
is so nostalgic. And this overall design with the pauldron and the realistic camera, it just screams Revenge of the Sith to me. It's not totally accurate to Revenge of the Sith. I know we could gripe about those little details, but this figure on my shelf, just it just makes me so happy. I hope we see more uses of these molds. I would love to see a Commander Bly and Commander Gree and basically every Revenge of the Sith clone trooper made by Hot Toys. Is that gonna happen? Probably not. These two look great side by side on the shelf and I just think there's no way to pick between these two. They look absolutely fantastic and they're just so nostalgic to the Clone Wars era of my love of Star Wars and the Revenge of the Sith era of my love of Star Wars. And now finally for the number one pick, I don't know how else to describe this besides just the total package of what I want from action figures and, and toys in general, but this was such an epic release and it was so much fun to track down and some people helped me actually track this down, which meant a lot to me. So part of this being number one in my pick also is the story behind it. But as you'll see, it's also a really, really good toy. And that is, of course, the San Diego Comic-Con Neon Superfly Warthog and Spartan from Jazzwares World of Halo. Now, as you can see, I have not opened this box yet. I actually had planned to do a full video unboxing of this set. I still intend to do that, but I have not gotten around to doing that. Now, the reason why I can safely say that this is a fantastic figure release is because I can see it right here in this beautiful picture window with built in black lights highlighting the like reactive paint that this is painted in. And of course, like I said, this is the total package. So even this holographic box art that we have here is part of what makes this the number one spot for me. I love Halo. I love cool action figures. And what more can I say than this is a cool Halo action figure. And even though this is a San Diego Comic-Con exclusive with a running number of only a thousand units, it's still relatively affordable. I've seen these go for really no more than a hundred dollars on eBay and they retailed at San Diego Comic-Con for I think 50 or 55. So you're only paying double. I know that seems like a lot, but looking at previous San Diego Comic-Con exclusive items, paying double for something isn't that outrageous. This is just the coolest pack that could have possibly been made by the Halo team. I truly hope that this line continues and that we get more incredible, incredible releases like this. And like I said, I still fully intend to unbox this and do a full video on it. So hopefully you can all expect that in 2024 at some point. My video making schedule has been just crazy this year. It's been a really odd year for content and just everything in general, but hopefully there's some new exciting things coming in 2024. I appreciate all of you that have stuck around for this. And as always, a big part of enjoying this hobby of collecting is the community that comes along with it. There are so many great friends that I've made along the way on Instagram and here on YouTube. And so, yeah, this is just a visual representation of little pieces of the year as I've gone along. I've picked up these figures. These have been released. I've picked them up. I saw a cool movie and I bought the action figure from it. And some things just represent really iconic moments of my childhood, playing Republic Commando, enjoying Revenge of the Sith and enjoying the Clone Wars. You know, this is just kind of a time lapse of the year almost. And while it hasn't been a great year, it's been a good year and I'm really pleased with how it's wrapping up and I'm excited for what the new year brings, both with action figures and with life. So, Anyways, yeah, here's my top 10 list or thereabouts. You know, obviously we have the, the extra figures, the honorable mentions, but let me know down in the comments, what is your top 10 figures for the year? How, how has your collecting been going and what's been your most like favorite pickup this year? As always, links to my social media down in the description below. Thank you all so much for watching. And if you made it this far in the video, have a wonderful evening, noon or night, depending on when you're watching this video. And as always, I'll be sure to catch you all in the next video.